Can you share with us uh, some of the most uh, challenges that you have encountered and how you were able to overcome them, for example? Uh, I would say the first challenge is uh, we, the diaspora Africans, we don't like supporting each other. Really? Unfortunately. Why not? Uh, I can't explain. You, but, find, uh, but, you uh, find a lot of uh, Ethiopian restaurants, for example, in uh, Washington, D.C., and I think part of the reason they are probably there, uh, at least the primary uh, audience or clientele, I would suppose, has to be Ethiopian. Ethiopians are an exception. And I've actually seen them in action in D.C. and Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. They must have a formula that we should uh, borrow from. And I keep uh, looking, for example, in 08 when President Obama was running, they rallied behind him. And uh, I'm not very sure that uh, after Obama got elected, several of them got into his administration. They actually did. In fact, uh, I think one of the highest uh, African-born officials in the Obama administration actually happened to be, guess where? Yeah. From Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, yes. So, and the Kenyans, we should have rallied behind him. We, uh, of course, we rallied behind him from You had the man the in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, but we were not nowhere to be seen. Again we stayed off the most important thing. So if we were to talk to the diaspora, the African diaspora really, yeah. what are the ABCs of this game really? Number one, our numbers matter. I've learned that from some uh, key people in this country, some people have been from, uh, from there uh, uh, since the civil rights movement, they always say numbers matter. And in this country we have uh, thousands of Africans who are US citizens, but sometimes we don't even vote in the states where we live in, or we don't come together in numbers. So those politicians, the only time they listen to us is when they see the numbers. Well, so you don't to, even know your congressperson exactly. or your senator. Exactly. So that when you probably need that person, you can actually have you access, access to them. access to them. So I would say to my diaspora uh, brothers and sisters, let's unite, let our numbers matter in whatever we want to do, so that when we go to our elected officials in the states where we live in, they will listen to us. Give the numbers legs so yes. that they can walk. So that they can walk. And then um, more importantly also, let's look back uh, in our continent. Uh, Africa is in dire need of the knowledge that we have. So let's not be comfortable by saying um, a successful teacher, engineer, doctor, banker in the US, but the villages where we come from are still crying for us. All of us came from some kind of village or a school that actually molded us to be the people that we are today. All it takes is just look back, lift one student up, go furnish one classroom. We shall have made a big, big difference. And for me, that is my cry for my, my fellow diaspora. Don't wait for the politicians to do it because they are not going to do it. But Interesting. we, coming together, two people, five people, 10 people, 100 people, we can create a movement create alumni associations. Uh, for example, social media, WhatsApp now, you can yes. have 250 people maximum. Utilize that mm -hmm. to create a movement so that we can make a difference in Africa. If you want change, you can't sit around waiting for it to happen. Um, you have to start you know, gathering people for, for, the, um, for the same effort and really strategize in that way. I know that he mentioned that Africans really don't like to work together. But if you have a common ground, we have to. That's the only way we can progress. And really investing in our youth because they're the ones that are going to be the beaming light for Africa. Very interesting. You know, there's a saying that uh, all of life is about uh, action and passion. Mm -hmm. And to ignore the actions and the passions of a lifetime or your generation is to risk not having lived at all. Mm -hmm. You're just occupying the space, really. Yes. And it seems true. to me most of us on the continent, really, we occupy space. That's why we are poor, because we have incredible resources. Mm -hmm. We do. Well, on that note, thanks to our distinguished guests, Toya Barije and Lastas Mongari. Thanks to our affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning's Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning into Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better Africa. <laughs> and please remember to keep the African hopes alive. <laughs>